All right. You know him as Putty on Seinfeld, or maybe as Joe from Fox's Family Guy. But before you see him at Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, actor Patrick Warburton joins us in studio. Good to see you. It's been a while. You've been, you've been on before. And um, what, you only, you only come once in a while. We have to talk about this. Well. <laughs> Jason, I love this town. You know, it still has that small town feel. Yeah, it actually does. Yeah. It does? I, I think it does. Yeah, for sure. It's, I've seen the changes throughout the years, you know, even in the show that we're doing right now, there's uh -huh. a picture of me as a 13 year old sandwiched between my sisters at the Riviera Hotel at a Barry Manilow concert. You know, that's funny because that was that your first concert? First show. My first concert was Billy Squire opening for Queen at Irvine Meadows when I was 19. That was the now, cool concert. That was the cool right. concert. The first show I went to, I was 13 and I had no choice. Right. You know, and I was on the family vacation and uh, it was ridiculous. But it was a lot of fun. You know. Same thing with me. First, first show was Barry Manilow. Really? With the forced show. Yeah. First real show was U2 under a blood red sky with, you know, with my boys and, and so parental guidance, if I remember. Yeah. That is very, very interesting. But 13, what did you, what did you, what were you like as a, were you funny as a kid? I mean, were you, were you, did you want to do the stand up? Do you want to do the acting or did you even know at 13? I'm not sure I really knew. When I was 11 yeah. years old, my mother let me know that I was going to be a Catholic priest because she had <laughs> given me to the Lord. I, I just, you know, uh, confusion, you know, failing out of junior college, just deciding, uh, hey, I could probably act. That doesn't right. take any formal education. Sure, sure. Um, but uh, my mother was an actress, and I okay. grew up watching her do you know, community theater, and uh, I think that's when I got really caught by the bug, you know, uh, Jerry Lewis movies and whatever. Yeah. I never really, I found early on that, uh, you know, co comedy and having a little bit of, you know, like a charm and sense of hearing about things could actually save your life. Yeah, yeah coming at you but because <laughs> uh, I was small I was a small skin school I weighed oh. 95 pounds freshman year that's crazy school. you're a yeah. big guy you know, well you... I was a year young too okay so I hadn't started growing yeah but Got that it. was it yeah so obviously you know and even when even when Bose came walking in the door he called, called you putty you, you're used to that you everyone people love that character and of course you know I don't even guy. respond to that yeah anymore. I wouldn't either I it's don't. like it's like it's like Sean Penn and Jeff Spicoli I mean I, I don't blame <laughs> him no I'm kidding but what is your favorite? What, what's your, like, what's the most memorable thing you've done that people probably, you know, I mean, Putty is pretty epic. I, I, listen, I just, you know, just three, three, about three years ago, I got to spend two years with the great Barry Sonnenfeld and an amazing cast doing a series of unfortunate events uh -huh. in uh, Vancouver. That was one of the best experiences of my life. Okay. Because of the material and because of the production value and because I got to work with Barry for two years. But, um, uh, you know, we did a film called The Dish with Sam Neill 20 years ago about okay. the Apollo 11 mission. And it's a true story. And so that's fascinating. Yeah. And, um, I've done weird stuff like The Woman Chaser and uh, The Civilization of Maxwell Bright, which is rather stark and dark and looks crappy because it was shot on PAL. <laughs> but it's actually, uh, you know, um, took pride in it because we... We did pretty well with that one. All right. I but, see you have the, uh, you, you kind of have the George Wallace tribute with the, the kangaroo right. here. One of our, one of our best comedians of Vegas. Did, did you know George was in my acting class years no ago? No way. Yeah. I was mean, it, it was like, weird. did you all get a kangle? It was weird. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just wear it because I have crap hair. Uh, I thought, <laughs> That's you cool, know though. what? I spent half an hour trying to make it look like I've got good hair <laughs> and just of the sun. And I've become very lazy in the old days. That's fine. That's Vegas. We're all, yeah. we're a little cash. Mm -hmm. what, so tell me about the Jimmy Kimmel, the comedy club. You guys have like a, 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 your time slot. Tell everybody about the time slot and why. Well, it's the very, it's the highly coveted <laughs> time slot, the matinee. It's a spot to fill. So I'm doing, you know, we're doing Letters from a Nut. It's just a lot of fun. Okay. What I've done is, you know, Barry Martyr is Jerry Seinfeld's producing partner. They're best friends. They do comedians in cars getting coffee together. Yeah, of course. They talk an hour on the phone every day. And Barry has been punking corporate America for years, mm -hmm. for like decades. He's got nine best-selling books. The letters are funny. I, he wanted to know if I'd do stage readings of them. So now what I do is I walk out, I do like 15, 20 minutes of stand-up, which I haven't done since I was 20 years old. Okay. So that's a half. It's a challenge. I love yeah, doing it. Right. But then the letters, the tenth letters are funny. The corporate responses aren't quite as funny. No, not. And I go, the only way to get this to work is if I have my 
best buddy, Mike Wilson, who's one of the best impersonators in the world, okay. do those letters. So I bring him in. So Mike kills. He steals the show. Okay. And, and, and that's all I want. Like, I don't even care. Because I just want a great show. <laughs> right, exactly. You know? And, you know, and I learned that from Jerry Seinfeld years ago. Because mm -hmm. I worked on another sitcom. I will not mention the name. You know, but with an actor, I had writers come up to me unsolicited saying, we'd love to write for you, but so-and-so won't let us. Because oh. they were very insecure. Yeah. Now you take Jerry Seinfeld, who hired Michael Richards, who was obviously going to steal every scene he was in. Right, Kramer, But Jerry of didn't care because it makes for a better show. That's cool. So I bring Mike in and I, I don't care that he steals it. It makes for a better show. Patrick, you're going to be spinning for charity after the break. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we'll do that. It is Vegas after all. Look at your hair there. Come on. Look at that. I mean, <laughs> that. That's that. fake. <laughs> ah, whatever. All right. We'll be back after this spinning for charity with Patrick Warburton. What is that picture from 72? <laughs>